to our code so far, if I if I run this in Chrome and I open up my my console, let's see where we're at. Uh, if I try to show classes, there's nothing to show yet. Perhaps it would be good at a certain point to put in some coding to not show anything until we've got something to show, because here we're trying to show a table of nothing, which will look weird to people. And then all these operations about deleting a class and editing classes, well, we don't have anything saved yet. So you can figure out pretty easily how to not show anything until there is something. That would be for us to check uh, the amount of records in the database. There are zero at the moment. So if database uh, you know, equals zero, don't display this. Uh, else it's greater than zero, so display. We'll do that later. What we're doing is we're trying to add stuff to the database to make changes. So if I was going to... Well, it's in the network folder. What's that? It should be. Is, is it not? I might be putting it accidentally in the other class. Let me check. Uh, mobile 3. Yep. Um, I copied it and then put today's date. So you get a copy of 6 and put today's date. So I'm trying to save some work. And I click go and I save and it saves. Where we last left off is that we need a way to edit our classes. I misspelled something here. I want to be able to edit that. The first version will be that we have to manually type what class are we talking about, because every class is tied to the CRN number, which internally is the ID. We need to specify which ID to be able to edit some elements. So we'll do it manually first. Then we will activate the ability to click the pencil for us to be able to edit it a little easier. At the moment, if I try to select a class that does exist to correct its text, and I click Edit, all that we've seen is, yes, we are detecting that you're typing something into the boxes of a class that exists. If I'm trying to edit a class that doesn't exist, we need to deal with that. That's the whole point of the doing db.get first we need to check, is the class that we're trying to edit, does it exist? If it doesn't, we need to deal with those error conditions. If it does exist, then next comes actually editing. So back to our code. And I guess we're toward the end somewhere. Function edit class. So at about line 167, yeah, so all we've done so far is try to get those values from the input fields in edit CRM, in edit class, in give you the values, store them. <clears throat> then we did some console output. We know that works. I'm just going to delete that. You can comment it out if you want. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is check if we uh, have a valid class to work with. Uh, so here uh, we need to, about, upon the database object dot get method, we need to first get, we need to check if this data exists. The particular data is dollar $val temp CRN. Everything in the database is based on <coughs> the ID, which is CRN. That will give us, as usual, a function callback. So function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace, and again we're getting, what do we call it, failure and success. Yeah, so we'll keep calling it failure, comma, success. These can be called different things. Error, correct, anything we need. That these are then objects that we get back from trying to execute dot get. If we have a failure and a success, it's a good idea to do if else to check if there's an error, do something about that. If there's no error, do something about that. So I'm going to break the curly braces into multiple lines.
group those into multiple lines where I will do an if else. I think I might have passed to everyone now. Did everyone get the uh, the pink sheet today? Anyone come a little late? Did everyone get the sign? So we want uh, dot get. We've got a failure or a success. That's the syntax we've seen before. Uh, I'm going to actually add an ending comment right here because we're going to lose track maybe. Uh, this curly brace parenthesis. That's the ending for my dot get. So maybe just a note for yourself and dot get. If the class doesn't exist, we will do a simple alert to the user that the class you're trying to edit doesn't exist. So we'll have alert. Oops, I'm sorry. In the if, we have say, we first check if failure. Is there, oops, is there a failure? If there is, it'll trigger the if portion. So we'll have alert. Your class doesn't exist. Or else it was not a failure, it was a success. So we will actually then replace the data. Alert. You can say something like warning, or error, or something nice. Backslash n to break that into its own line. We might not have done that very, very much, but in the alert field, in the alert pop up, if we do a backslash <coughs> n, that's a new line. It creates a new line. So it'll say warning on one line, new line, the rest. The rest that I'm going to say is the CRN. The particular CRN that they're trying to type doesn't exist. Warning, the CRN123 does not exist. So we need to add string concatenation plus on that the current val temp CRN, continuing the string, the CRN does not exist. At this one, we can save and run it to try to trigger the failure condition. Uh, so run it and add one thing at least to your database, and then try to add, try to edit a CRN that does not exist. You should get a pop-up that pops up and it says, "Warning: the CRN that you typed does not exist." Run that. I have at least one thing in my database. I know I have CRN123. I'm going to try to edit class CRN122 with something else. Edit class. Warning. The CRN122 does not exist. So I'm typing in something that doesn't exist and I was and I managed to hit the error condition. to first do a get before we actually do an update of our data. That means we get into the else portion. Once we have valid data up to this point, we get into else. Inside of that, we will ha have the actual pouch command, which will also give us a failure or success. So I'm going to put another comment at the end of my else here, because I'm going to lose track of this one once I have another if-else inside of it, because I'll have an if-else after trying to do my real operation inside of else. So I'll say and uh, if-else of dot get.
the documentation of PouchDB tells us that we have uh, db.put to add new data to the database. But we also use db.put to update data to the database with one extra field. We have an underscore ID, which delineates every document from every other document. But then we have an underscore rev field that delineates one version of the data, one revision of the data, with another one. So if we want to make changes to existing data, we need to specify which ID and which rev on the same command as before, db.put. So inside of your else, we use dot .put to add data for the first time and updating data. But we must specify a rev revision for subsequent subsequent changes updates we saw that underscore rev if we do our console output uh, our documents have a randomly generated string of like 64 characters or something uh, we don't have to really deal with what the character, what the randomly generated string is. We don't, we don't worry about that. But we do have to specify which version are we changing into a new version, and that's all built in through the system here, as we'll see. So what we're trying to do at this point in DB dot put Before with db.put, don't type this, but we had a class. A class was the bundle of data in JSON format that was a brand new class. Uh, here, we're going to keep it the separate fields because we're asking for the three fields there, and we could have put those into var new class and beat it new class. But we need to do it separately because we also need to specify the, the revision number. And we can't really do that um, the way we've got it set up. So this is going to be in JSON format, and it's going to look a little messy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split this into multiple lines. We have then the underscore ID field. Have the underscore, or we have the C, C class field. These lines are not complete, but I'm just going to write them this way to, for them to make sense. C inst. And that's what we had the very first time we created the class last week. Now we need to also specify the fourth field that is necessary for updates. Underscore rev. The order of these don't don't quite matter. Here we've got the rev field. I'm going to tab these over just so that they look nice. It doesn't matter. Success dot underscore ID. We could use the same val temp crn. This is much more safe because if you remember last Wednesday, we were we were doing something. We were, we were deleting we were deleting a class, and we were reusing like val temp crn or something, and it didn't fully delete it because we we actually needed to specify the whole block of data, not just its ID. So here it's safer to use what is the internal ID rather than what are we accepting from the person typing it. Uh, because oh, one thing we're forgetting to do is to uppercase. Um, so here, yeah, we need a to uppercase because if we don't, and the person's trying to delete class one, two, three, X, and they put lowercase x, it will not delete it. So we'll get back to that in one moment. To uppercase. 
But anyway, here I'm specifying in the success object it's got the ID. These other ones, I can use the temporary values of what they're trying to type in. Val temp class, oops, and then we need a comma at the end of ID and class, and then val temp inst comma. Although this is part of the JSON data, one name and value pair, comma, name and value pair, comma, name and value, comma, name and value, no comma for the final one. And the final one is success underscore rev. We should not put any comments on the side over here because technically we're inside of the JSON object and JSON is very finicky. No comments inside of it. We can do it before or after. Let's say before. Passing in the new version of the data. In a raw JSON format with rev from success object. So then the new properly spelled class name will be will replace the old version, the new properly spelled instructor or the ID, but that's a special case that I'll come back to. And then we have to specify, okay, this basically create a new revision number. Originally this version of the class data is, you know, one dash whatever, and now we're doing a new one. Just uh, as a quick note here to show this in the application, in the index db pouch. In my case, I've got one, I've got one class so far. I've added, I've added the misspelled name, and my rev for that data is 1-e90. Just for fun, I'll note that, e90. And so what we're trying to do here is a new version. A new rev will be invented. We will get two dash something, some random number. The result of trying to do dot put, like every other pouchdb command, is success or failure. So we have to go down here. Be careful right here. Right between the curly brace and the parenthesis, we need to put a comma, because we've seen before. Something, comma, function. This is the something in JSON format broken up into different lines so we can simply read it. This could have been one line, which is harder to read. Comma, function, failure, success, as usual. Function, curly braces, failure, success. Do not forget that comma right there. We have our first parameter, the second parameter. Then I'm going to break that curly brace where I need to create an if-else statement. That's why we have those notes there. So in this function, failure, success, break the curly brace. I'll put a comment right there and a dot put for revised data. This ends with the put inside of this function. We start another if else. So 
inside a function if else note here uh, and if else uh, dot put if failure we'll do a pop up by the time we're this deep into the into the if else a second if else there probably isn't a mistake because we know that the class exists the first the first if else made sure of that if if class 122 doesn't exist you have the error right away you should not be getting this deep in here but if that happens we have we better do a console output for ourselves because what what is this error by the time we get here and then for the user big old error, which probably shouldn't happen. We shouldn't be able to, to trip that error. If we get to the else, then it was a successful updating of the data. Just to see what that looks like, we will put that success object Maybe as a string, we'll say data updated. So if we got this far down to the else, the data should have uh, should have changed in the database. But where did it not change? It changed in the database internally, but where else should it change? I think I heard someone say externally in the table that people are looking at. Because if I misspelled Spanish and I corrected Spanish, I wanted to show to people you spelled it properly. So we need to do the what's our function to redraw the table again? Function show class or something. What did we call it? Yeah, function show class. So redraw the table. There's new data. By the time we get to else, we know we've updated the database. Therefore, we need to show class again to show the table again with the latest data. I think, it <coughs> I think at this point we can test it. So save it and run it. I've got one class in there that is misspelled, class 123. So in the fields, I'm going to type 123. I'm going to spell the name properly, Spanish with one H, and then the instructor's name, and I'll click Update. That should then change it in the database internally and also visually for the user. Let's see. If I run that, pull up console, I've got class. If I show class, I've got class 123. I'm going to edit class 123. Spell it properly. Spanish. Instructor Campos. Edit class. The table redrew, properly spelled. I get a data updated. And then some object which is not that interesting to look at, but data has been updated. And if I go look on application, and I look at index db, pouch, by sequence, there's a new version of the data. First one is spelled, I have the second one properly spelled. 1-e90, 2-f0. It updated it visually. I can change it completely. I can write it's class 123, 
and it's actually math 101 with instructor Jones. Edit that, and it edits on screen. I refresh my database. I've got a third piece of data. All of these have the original CRN or ID, underscore ID of 123, now a new red. Whatever that is, it doesn't matter, but it's the third version. Completely new data. Let's pause there if that worked. You should have it updating now. Let me put my code back here. Anyone need a little help? Did it work for you? Somebody want to need some help? So this is the operation we need to do to update the data. It's dot put again, but the importance is underscore rev. And underscore rev comes from automatically to us when we do the dot put uh, from the success. It's built into it's built into it uh, from dot get in the previous lines. That's why then here we say, okay, that successful object it needs a rev to invent a new rev, and we're able to put it back into the, the database. If we don't have that rev part, this thing fails. And we've got the if and the else. So again, I don't think I can make an error at this point. Well, the way pouch is set up is in order for us to be able to manipulate the data, <coughs> we need to first check if the data exists. So that's what get is. So we check. Is cl does class one, two, three exist? Yes. So it's yes. Okay, it does exist. So now let's try to put it a new version. We're trying to put a new version. Did we fail that? So then we've got failure, or else we've got success and it didn't change it. So there's our first check right here. Do we have the data? We don't have the right data. You're trying to change class one, two, three with class one, two, two. Failure. So then it stops us at that point. Although this is for the edit class, yes. And the rest of this, uh, you don't quite need any comments here, but it should make sense. We did the dot put and then if else, refresh the table. Now, we, we see a bit of an issue here. Uh, okay, I've got class 123 Math 101 Jones. That should have been class 123x math 101 Jones. Edit. Warning. The CRN 123x does not exist. Do you see what's happening here conceptually? We have data saved into the database with an ID of 123. And I'm saying to edit an ID of 123x doesn't exist. So I'm trying to change something that doesn't exist. This is where a pencil comes in. So I want to click the pencil, and I want the correct fields to fill in here for me. I don't want to type them myself. And then I'll change what I need to change. This would also help with that whole, remember I was saying we're missing the two uppercase to change the CRN to uppercase. I, I've remembered. We don't need it because we're going to have this set up anyway. We're going to click the pencil, fill it in for us, whatever, however it's spelled in the database. It's, it, that's how it's correct, so the person won't misspell it once we click the pencil. So let's get our button uh, of our pencil to work. This is to prepare. This button will prepare these fields. And right now this whole thing doesn't look that nice, because we're not using jQuery Mobile. 
Once we use jQuery Mobile, it will make it look nice. We'll, we'll click the pencil and a nice little pop-up will animate to show us this. Right now it's there and ugly, but we will be able to use jQuery Mobile once we integrate it back into the project for some more interesting uh, design, more user-friendly design. So the way this works is we need to make that pencil a trigger to start to be able to edit our, our data. We're going to use that pencil to populate the temp class, temp inst, and temp crn for us. Instead of the person typing it manually, we will take what's in that row of data and automatically put it into these fields. So let's back up to the section where we've got all of our all of our event handlers, all of our on clicks. Let's back up to the top. Yes. Just also I this is what was meant with regard to us. In the edit class when we keep when the, the information is not fully complete in the edit, yeah. What sort of condition do we use to make sure that all information is fully um, that's what that's what we're getting at here with the pencil. We're going to make the pencil active. And this will automatically populate this for us so that we know it's correct, and then we can edit it. Okay. All right. Let's find where do we have all our on clicks at about line forty-five or so. The, uh, that button of that pencil looks exactly the same, or conceptually is exactly the same as some of these other dynamic elements. The delete button doesn't exist until after you at least show something, and uh, our edit, to, to edit the whole thing, doesn't exist until we do show. So we'll have to do something similar here, where if you click the pencil, it uh, will then do the following. So after the next... After that current line, we'll do the same thing. We need to target LDIV results, which does exist at runtime on. Again, the uh, event is a click, comma. In here, we, we're going to deal with that, uh, with that pencil, which is a class. So in quotes, it's dot something. I forgot what we called it. We need to look at our table. We made that pencil, probably like BTN pencil or edit pencil or something. Let's see. Down on our table here. All right here. BTN pencil. So we've got a class. So it's a dot BTN pencil. In this part of the code is where we would then invoke a function. We would mention a function to run at this point. Um, we will call this function fu function uh, edit prep class. This will prepare. The point of the pencil is to have it fill my fields for me. That's preparation. It's a function to edit, to function prep edit class, whatever, however we call this thing. Edit class, prep class, uh, edit prep class. Yeah, that'll work. Well, not quite actually, because we're getting complex here. We're using a class. A class is different than an ID in that a class can be attached to multiple elements, which is exactly what we want here. So we need to specify, specify which of the rows am I talking about. I've got five rows of class data. Which of the five rows? So we need to get a little more fancy here. Uh, let's, um, let's back up. And what we need to do is, well, ultimately, we're trying to pass 
we're trying to pass a, an argument into the function. The syntax is no parentheses, just run the function. I'm trying to pass an argument. I'm trying to pass the data of this particular button, this particular row that I've clicked on. So we need to have parentheses for our, our argument. The problem is, once we've got parentheses right here, it will want to invoke it immediately. It won't even wait for a click. It'll suddenly run, run that function. That's just the way it is. Uh, we, we notice we don't have parentheses on these previous ones. They don't launch instantly until we click. Until we click. This one's going to be special. It's going to want to run it right away. So what we have to do is wrap that around an anonymous function. Let's back up and write function, parentheses, curly brace, and curly brace. This will prevent it from running automatically. And this will give us the ability to pass an argument into the function. Just make sure you write this exactly as it is. Click comma, target comma, function wrapped around with an anonymous function. Open close parentheses, open close curly brace. Be very careful how all of that is written. <coughs> Yeah, it, it could be then, we could then pass the data into it as an argument. That's what we're trying to do. Let's make a note there. That one's a special one, so let's make a note. Uh, passing data into a function needs an anonymous function first. If we wanted to pass data into this delete class, we needed the parentheses. It would not work. So we would need the function, anonymous function first. And using jQuery, we can specify this is the is the row, this is the thing I'm talking about. This is the data. So in the parentheses, we're going to write dollar parentheses. That's the jQuery selector. What we've got over here, dollar parentheses. Div results under LDiv. We're using the jQuery selector here. We're passing the data of this, literally, this pencil that we clicked on, which is the reserved word this. So which pencil did I click on? This pencil I clicked on, whichever one I clicked on. So we're passing that object that we clicked on into, into the function to prepare, to edit it, to be able to edit it. The prep class is helping me then to do the edit. Yeah. So conceptually, this is really advanced, really cool, because we are able to then specify which which of the buttons did we click on. Let's write then the function. Let's go back to the bottom and write the function. Function edit prep class. Mm -hmm. So I'll come back to this line in a moment, but that should be what you have there. It's things that we've seen before and something brand new. You should be very careful that you write these proper pairs of parentheses and all of that. And um, before I leave here, might as well then comment uh, this is the currently clicked object in jQuery notation. passing into a function, passing an argument <coughs> or data into a function needs an anonymous function first. This is the currently clicked object in jQuery notation. This, this doesn't work unless you've got jQuery, which we do. It's one of the first libraries we activated in this project. 
Let's go then back to the bottom and start to define our function edit prep class. This is this. This is what you clicked on. We're setting it up that the pencil is attached to all seven of my rows. So this has to be what I've currently clicked on. It's not going to be randomly anywhere else in my project. It's this that I clicked on, this particular pencil that I clicked on on whatever row I'm on. So this is used to identify anything in question at the moment. In question right now is the pencil that I currently clicked on right now. So for example, if another option is to move that item up, example, and so this would be another class, not in the same class of edit, right? It would be a different class, exactly. Okay. So we could call it, you know, dot, uh, dot yeah. add picture. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go to the bottom, and after our end class, we've got function edit curly braces, this is end function edit prep class. This one has that argument that we're passing into of this, so we need to specify this function is defined that we, it's going to accept a parameter. You know that technically there's a difference between a parameter and an argument? Parameter is when you define the function, we define it with a parameter. But when we actually feed it or pass it the data, now then it's an argument. So technically, it's two different definitions. Argument is data passing into it, and par parameter is when you're defining the function. This can be called anything we want. I'll call it this OBJ, this object. I'm passing data. What I'm expecting to pass into this function is this current object that I've clicked on. function to prepare to edit the data. The row of data needs a this argument. So we're saying that this object, this obj, is the name that we're going to use internally in the function. Just like we've got the name failure and success as what we use internally in that block, using this obj. It can be anything we want. I would not, however, call it dollar this, dollar this. That's a reserve. It would, it would confuse it, actually. So we don't want to use this keyword here. It's not that this object. Out of curiosity, console.log this obj. Save it and run it. Put a couple of things in your database. If you've only got one thing in the database, add a few more things into your database. Then click on the pencil. Check your console, because obviously this is not fully set up yet. But in your console, you should start, you should start to see something interesting. And then you'll start to see what we need to still fix. So see if this works at this point to show you something in your console.
So I'm going to add class 111, and I don't need real data just yet. Class 222. So I've got some, I've got some data. I'm going to click the pencil on my first row. This is saying I've clicked on a particular object. Click on that one, click on that one. I can look inside of that object and show me some other pieces of data. Um, pretty deep. But the point of this is that you should then see console output that there's an object. If you click on a particular row, that row is full of data. Technically, we're not, we're not specific enough. This is showing you this. This is showing you the pencil, BTN pencil. It's showing me the cell, TD, pencil. So this has been too specific. Um, I want to use the pencil to refer to not just this, but the whole row. Because technically, we're only referring literally to the pencil we clicked on. We need to refer to the row of data. So, little change. We're going to go back to where we've got our on click. Be specific here. This is saying this pencil. We actually need after the parenthesis of the of the jQuery selector. Be careful because there's going to be a bunch of these here. We need dot parent so I'm showing that doing console output right now says yeah you've clicked the pencil that parent is then saying pass into the function whatever pencil we've clicked on the parent element which is the whole row basically and now that is saying we're dealing with the whole row of data the parent container where this current object is. The pencil is inside of a, of a TD, and then the whole row is inside of a TR, table row. So that's what that's saying. Pass the data of the whole parent element of this element that I clicked on. Technically, when we created the, the pencil over here, look at where, look at where we applied class. We didn't apply it literally to the pencil. We applied it to the cell, TD. So dot parent is the whole TR. The parent element is all of that row. So this dot parent is passing the whole row of data of this pencil that I clicked on. Nothing else needs to change down on my function. It's still going to work the same. It's this object data. Now it's the whole row. But make sure you change that right over here. And watch out for all of these symbols, curly braces and all of that. Because this, there's this parenthesis right here, which is for the whole name of the function. There's this curly brace, which is the anonymous function. There's this one, which is for the parent. There's this one for this. If you save it and run it, what's that? And on mine, it's at approximately line 48, but you need to find where your, where your click is at. So now if you save it and run it, you should get different data. You should actually now get the row of data, the, all of the cells, not just the one pencil cell, the one cell of the pencil. Let me check mine. Show class. I click the first pencil. I've selected the whole TR. If I look inside of that, inside of the data,
inner HTML, there's the data inside of that cell. TD, TD, there's the class. So this is like looking at it in a completely raw way. Oh, and then over here we've got offset parent table t table CSS, where we added that class to the whole table that it's in. So this is what we wanted. We wanted the whole TR. A moment ago, I think I still have it here, a whole moment ago we had TD, only the pencil cell. And here we've got the whole row, TR. If I look at that one, and I open it to view here, I see that that was the row of math. So this obviously is very important for this to work. Let's pause here. Make sure you're getting a TR output, not, not a TD. This is where I'm at so far. Anyone need some help? You need the relation. Actually, have this because you cannot. You need to have a relation number. Mm -hmm. If you type this, mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. Use the space here yeah, because they have space. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm trying. Mm -hmm. it. Thank you. 
first two hours. Can you see? Oh, you can you refresh and just save it. Let, let's see. Did you? Okay, let's save. Did you refresh? So something wrong. Let's check what is wrong. Still same thing. Let's go to the code. Same thing. No, no, no. It is in cut. In the DB cut. Anyone else? I think we've got that working for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Missing something? Cancel that.
Can you close all the browser? Then we will take yes. see if something. What's the very last thing that you're trying to do? Edit to collapse so that it doesn't let you edit it. Uh. that they So, because you can narrow my content, which I don't see those very much, but I can set up as those sorts of things in pairs. So, just uh, to kind of see the difference.
That's what it's named internally in the system. Here you see the underscore pouch, underscore pouch. It, it should be able to be the video recommended. And I've done it before, but for some reason it's not there. to the point that I didn't think we could cause. There's an error here. It's not a thing. So
but I, I just launched uh, Chrome, I mean uh, Firefox. I launched Firefox and it's brand new beta and it's still sitting. It's still sitting. Right. And uh, what is that? You see? Is that means honey? We can do this. Uh, but it is still there. Mm. Let's create a brand new version of the data yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay. Brand new. Okay. Yeah. So now completely new empty database. All right, let's see here. So the, um, the whole point of what we're trying to do here is to make sure that we're able to, with the pencil, retrieve the whole, uh, the whole row of data. And so I am seeing that in my console. We're saying, yes, this that you clicked on is the whole table row. The table row is made out of all of these elements. If you look here, the important thing is that Internally, the browser sees it like this, inner HTML, TD first cell, TD second cell, TD third cell, TD fourth cell. So what we will do is, based on the pencil that we click on, okay, this is the pencil, this is the row. Take this cell and put it here. Take this cell and put it here. And take this cell and put it here. We are seeing that the code sees those cells. So now let's put that data down there. That's what our prep function is trying to do. Back to our code all the way to the bottom. To back to our prep function. We're seeing that we have we're getting that row of data that that the parent of this pencil that we clicked on. So what comes next is we need to um, store the values inside of the cell, because this is just sort of like in a raw format. Store them in a variable, and then use them in that variable to put them into the actual cells automatically. So we'll create some variables, and do the same thing here, uh, val, temp, crn. We can use the exact same value that we have on the other function because of the function level scope this variable only exists in this function. It's got the same name as one up there, but that's a different function, so these will play nice. They're, they're separated in different functions. This is going to be equal to, here's the fun part, this dot obj, I'm sorry, this obj dot um, we have a whole row. The whole row is this obj, so we need to then dot find we need to find the particular cell in question. We have TD, the first cell, TD, the second cell, TD, the third cell, TD, the fourth. So we're trying to find the cell, in quotes here, that matches our particular string. TD, we've got four TDs to work with. But we're talking about the TD colon that equals to the zeroth cell. Because remember, we start counting with uh, zero numbers. Find the first cell of this object, which is the whole row. And this, this jQuery method here is trying to find a string in our data, a cell that is equal to the zero itself. 
what I care about that is then dot text. Give me the text that is in that cell that we are specifying in this row of data. It's a comment. Uh, get the text of the cell td equal to the zero width position of the whole row. This object. The whole row is at the moment this object. Give me the text of the cell equal to the first cell of the row. At the end of the line here, I need to then create a variable for val temp class and then val temp inst. Same sort of way with one little change, of course. So next line, val temp class equal to this object dot find dot text val temp inst is equal to this object dot find dot text end of statement so the find was first equal to zero the find is equal to one and the find is equal to two first cell second cell third cell The dot find is a jQuery method. We have the object, we have an object created in jQuery, and then we're applying the find method to help us find something in that object. And we only care about then the text. So then we run the text method to extract the text of what we found in this object. Yes. Mm, that would work too, I think. That would work. So this is because it's JSON and JSON form has to be different. Well, at this point, we're not in JSON format. We're in jQuery. Oh. We're in jQuery. We're using J, uh, J, jQuery code to, to find what we're looking for. Because we've got a row of HTML, and then we're using jQuery to scan oh. that row. But we, there's other ways also to kind of find. There's other jQuery ways. There's many. There's many ways to skin the cat, right? So there's many ways to use jQuery to find what we're looking for. That what you're saying might also work. And then the last one, TD colon equal to the third position uh, or index two. We'll forget the end of statement because all of this is chained back to our first bar right there. The point of this is then to take all of this that's currently in that cell and put it into the those fields. Then we'll take a break. We're assuming here we've extracted the text of the particular cell. Okay, we've got them in variables. So now we need to use these variables and put them into the input boxes on screen. Next line. We can then simply refer to those particular cells. Let's see, what do we call those cells? Um, sorry about that word. What? Oh, parentheses, yes. All of those need parentheses methods. And then what we need is the the name of the particular dynamic cells in our edit. We call it in edit CRN in edit class. Okay. So we're saying next the jQuery selector. It's jQuery because it's got the dollar. We're gonna select a particular element called pound in edit CRN. Those boxes have that unique ID. Don't forget the pound sign. So we're selecting it. And previously we've seen dot val to extract 
the value of what's in the box. But we can also use dot val to put into the input field a value. And that's why we've got then dollar val temp CRM. Find me that input box. That's basically that. Find me the input box. Set its value to what is currently on the zeroth cell of the row in that variable. We'll do the same thing for the next two cells, the next two input boxes. It's jQuery selector, quotes, pound, in, edit, class, dot val, something, and then jQuery selector, pound, in, edit, inst, dot val. These vals are being set to. With it, without putting anything into them, we're extracting what's currently in them. With something in them, we're setting those input fields. Val temp class. Val um, temp inst. So obviously, when I'm using real <coughs> software, when I'm using some real app, and I click things like this, it just works. When we're making our own app, look at what we need to do. We need to check. Give me the data of that row, process the data, put it into the field, and then it'll work. So we have to do it manually. Save it and run it, click on any of those pencils, and what should happen in the edit fields, it should take what is in that row and put it into those fields. That'll save us the effort of us typing it ourselves. If that works, take a break. If it doesn't, call me over. Let me check mine. Let's see if I wrote it properly. I'll show class. I don't need my console at the moment. I click on my first pencil, it fills in the first row. Click on my third pencil, it fills in the third row. I fill in more data. This is class 777. Save that to a brand new cell, click the pencil, add it to data. Then I can make that. Well, that's actually class 7779 with instructor 7799. Edit. That still works. That edit should still work. The whole point of the pencil in our function is to fill in these fields to make it easier for them not to make a mistake. So if that worked, we can go ahead and save it. And let's take a break. It's 7.30. We'll take a break until 7.40. If it didn't work, call me over. I'll put my code into the folder up to this point, and then I'll come and help you out. So I'm putting, I'm putting into the folder my code, today's date, dot temp.